Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to GOD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles Coast. Today is the 5th of June 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's uh, morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, guys. Uh, we have a very uh, exciting day in, in front of us. So yep, uh, but as always, guys, before we uh, do anything, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, now then, also just before we jump in, as always, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the uh, research uh, tab right there on the top guys so uh, now then a uh, quick update on what's happening here globally so as you can see the figure continues to rise and uh, yep uh, it, we are currently at, 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 at around six million six hundred and forty thousand so um, of course that's well, that's not good, uh, but yep, it is a, it is how it is. But let's have a look at what happened yesterday in terms of the daily cases. So yep, those have risen, uh, kind of came very close to its its record, unfortunately. But yep, uh, hopefully it's gonna go down because in the beginning of this week I was talking about. Um, this I a potential idea of seeing maybe um, seven million by the end of this week, but uh, uh, most likely it's not going to happen. And uh, of course, very good. Uh, but yep, let's continue monitoring the figure and let's see when will we hit that seven million figure because it might be maybe in the beginning of next week. Um, so now then, uh, jumping into a few charts very quickly. So quick update here on German DAX. Uh, so the index uh, closed in the past. Uh, well. Uh, it closed in slightly in the negative zone um, and uh, it closed below uh, the previous day uh, high and uh, yep you can see that although what I was saying that although even if we see a drop below this below this area below the 12,507 zone uh, even if it decides to retreat lower still the bulls have a chance to step in somewhere around here before we uh, we hit this upside line or let's say even if we hit this upside line this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of May still uh, there is a possibility for the uh, bulls to go in and drive this one higher however if this upside line breaks and we see the price falling below the 11,770 zone then well I mean this is where it could become a bit tricky and uh, yep uh, maybe lower levels could be met then but again for now guys uh, be very careful uh, be very cautious and uh, yep for now like I said looking at the cash index by the way let me just quickly take a look at that because I believe that this one is rising again um, now then yes uh, so the cash index is trying to make its way higher and by the way the cash index right now is floating slightly above the uh, this uh, 12,507 zone so in a way there is a good possibility for this one to continue pushing further north as I've mentioned before and during this uh, during one of my videos this week uh, our our main target for now is around here the 12,886 87 zone roughly around here and then we would take it from there guys uh, but for now like I said in a way it could it could be quite interesting to see if the um, if the com this index 
could continue drifting higher this week and kind of uh, have a nice strong rally uh, strong uh, weekly candle here uh, but of course let's see how it's going to play out for now yes it is we are leaning a little bit more to the upside especially given the fact that uh, the cash index right now is balancing above the 12,507 zone but of course like I said be very careful today we have an eventful day and uh, we have a quite a busy calendar I would say uh, so yep guys something to keep in mind um, but of course like I said let's see how this is going to play out um, FTSE 100 now this one continues to rise as well um, and uh, last time when I talked about this one I was telling you guys to keep an eye on this Fibonacci retracement here as you can see we managed to overcome the 50% Fibonacci retracement and uh, it yep it, it automatically pushed the price above the 100 day EMA and what I was saying that our next targets are around 6460 and the 6537 areas approximately around here now if we look at the cash index right now we can see that uh, the price is currently currently balancing uh, slightly above the uh, where it closed yesterday. Uh, the it's currently moving around 6,372 zone, roughly around there. So basically, it's still a good sign, and still uh, the bulls have a chance to push this one higher. Uh, like I said, we will initially aim only for the 6,460 and the 6,537 zones, and then we'll take it from there because we have above that we'd have a nice area as well nice area of resistance near the uh, the 200-day uh, EMA, which also coincides with the 61.8% retracement of the Fibonacci. So keep your eyes on that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Now then, gold. Uh, so uh, with gold, um, it's, an, well, it rebounded yesterday from this area, from this upside support line, or uh, it kind of, and this uh, level here, the 1694 zone. Uh, what I was talking about yesterday was that uh, basically, if uh, it continues to trade here in this little area above this upside support line, and uh, but below this key area uh, of resistance near the 17.48 zone, uh, we'll probably remain a little bit on the neutral side because, as you can see, it's a bit of a tricky one here right now because. It's not really doing much. It's kind of still moving a little bit sideways. So uh, that's why we would prefer to wait for a daily close below the 16 and 94 zone here before considering uh, slightly lower areas. And the same story with the upside, a daily close above the 17.48 zone, which is the highest point of April, could do the trick here for more buyers. But again, like I said, for now, we're going to remain a little bit on the neutral side. Uh, now then, uh, silver. Uh, so uh, with silver here, uh, it's it's similar story. I mean, uh, the the moment uh, it's keeps keeps on kind of balancing above this 17.60 level that I talked about previously. And what I was mentioning uh, before was that if this area continues to provide decent support, then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher. So for now, we're kind of still sticking to this idea. Um, however, uh, the kind of the rebound, the strong rebound, is not happening yet. Uh, so we'll see how, as one when I've mentioned once this week, we'll see how this weekly candle is going to end because it's going to be quite interesting. Because if the weekly candle, if this today's candle will stay below this, then yes, uh, below this area below the 17.60 then the weekly candle will remain below it as well and kind of in could increase the chances of this one drifting a little bit further south uh, next week um, and uh, maybe even testing this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of May or oh, sorry uh, yeah until 18th of March um, but if this upside support line provides these good uh, provides a good hold up here and the bulls might, might step in back and into the game and drive this one higher again so again like I said for now it's probably more of a waiting game on these two commodities on the gold and silver uh, so in a way we rather wait and uh, in, in, instead of uh, on, instead of being uh, we rather be safe than sorry let's put it this way um, so in terms of the downside, we need to break of this upside line and a drop below the low of the uh, 22nd of May, which is around the 16.73 territory here. And only then probably we could uh, consider lower levels, but still uh, the more comfortable level for us would be from around here somewhere, the 16.3940 zone, roughly around there, because the uh, drop below this area would also place the price below all of its EMAs. Um, Ripple. 
So Ripple is, um, so after it had a nice uh, spur here to the upside this week, as you can see, the crypto is back in below this level, below this 0 0.2052 territory that I talked about previously a lot. And, um, and in a way, of course, the fact that it's kind of back below this, I mean, in this increases uh, the fear that uh, the, uh, the the crypto might drift further south again here. So, uh, but to be honest, uh, it, it it has been kind of trading a lot here below this level. But uh, we, as you can see, this week, for example, we had a nice overshoot here. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll remain careful here because again, it's a very difficult situation here. It seems that there's not much activity here in the crypto world. So um, apart from these little sharp uh, random outbursts. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, it's just kind of move. It's I would say even like flattish a little bit. So, um, so yeah, the fact that it's back above below the 0 0.2052, that of course, yes, makes us a little bit worry, uh, worrying. Um, and uh, uh, the it kind of increases the chances of drifting a little bit lower. However, again, like I said, uh, we had similar situ situations here before, uh, but still it overcame this barrier and then kind of drifted back down. So if we look at the weekly can uh, weekly chart, by the way, um, so let me just zoom in here. You can see that on the weekly uh, uh, weekly chart, it's clearly visible that this barrier continues to provide uh, strong resistance. So in other words, guys, if you have a bit of time, you can just wait for this one to uh, let's say have the to wait for a weekly candle uh, kind of moving and staying outside of this uh, of this little range. I would say maybe it's a range, roughly it's a range. Um, and uh, if we get a nice weekly candle staying above this uh, 0 0.2053 territory, then yes, we could consider a larger extensions to the upside in the medium term. So, uh, so yeah, guys, uh, keep your eyes on this. Uh, probably the weekly candle here is the more useful one than rather than even the daily one. Um, DXY now. The dollar index, uh, can, this this idea here that I had previously didn't quite work out, so it continued to slide lower. Uh, I was hoping for maybe a small correction back up and then a slide, but it didn't happen. So you have to admit that. Um, so the uh, yes, for now, basically, uh, we can say that as long as it's going to remain below this short-term tentative downside resistance line, we will stay negative and we're going to continue targeting the downside. So uh, for now, guys, uh, like I said, this is how you could, we could play this one out. If this continues to slide, yes, uh, keep your eyes on some of these levels, like for example, the um, let me just adjust this very quickly. So, for example, the uh, 96.36 level, which is the lowest point of December uh, of last year. And, uh, yep, we'll take it from there. But uh, for now, guys, uh, be very careful. Now, of course, as you are aware, probably today we do have the uh, uh, quite an eventful day, uh, especially in, in the U.S. Uh, we do have the uh, U.S. job numbers coming out, so non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. Um, for now, the expectation for the non-farm payroll is slightly better than the uh, than the previous uh, figure, which was at around uh, 20, 20 and a half million uh, jobs lost um, in the in the in the previous month. Um, for the month of May, yes, the forecast currently is uh, at around uh, eight million loss uh, lost jobs. So, of course, this is better, much better than the previous figure. However, um, yep, uh, as you probably understand logically this is still not good still a huge number uh, comparing it to the previous months uh, where we were constantly in a positive territory and, and roughly between uh, kind of uh, around 100 and uh, 300,000 K uh, in, in surplus every single time so that's why uh, guys yep uh, uh, be very careful with this of course uh, let's keep an eye on the on the on the market and uh, of course the unemployment rate is something else to keep in mind because um, that is expected to come out at 19.8 um, percent so this is just if you if you can imagine this one fifth almost one fifth of the population so uh, of, of, of sorry of the pop of the workforce so 
Uh, so yeah, guys, c uh, keep your eyes on the calendar today. It's quite interesting. Uh, we do have the Canadian numbers as well, Canadian employment numbers. But um, in terms of the dollar here, I mean, if the figures continue to disappoint, then well, uh, DXY might slide further south. And as I said, uh, as long as this downside line remains intact, yep, uh, we uh, we could uh, see some some more uh, some more downside. Uh, AD CAD. AUD CAD here jumping into a few pairs. Now this one is on fire and continues to rise and managed to overcome this uh, the highest point of January this week. So um, or actually managed to overcome it uh, earlier already. So in the uh, in around the end of May. But yep, uh, it continues to fly high. It continues to try and make n these new highs for May. Oh, sorry for for this year. Um, for now, of course, don't get me wrong. Even on on the daily chart here, we can see that the uh, price is, or the rate is uh, slightly over so overbought. Uh, so maybe a bit of correction could be possible. However, for now, we're not seeing any uh, reversal signs. So yep, for now, keep your eyes on this, guys. Um, of course, we can draw here something like this, something like an upside support line, but it's going to be a bit of a tentative one, I would say. So mainly, probably focus on some key support and resistance levels now the next strong area of resistance for us is around here near the highest point of April uh, of 2019 so uh, near the 0 0.9615 uh, zone uh, good potential target of course don't get me wrong it's, it still has a huge kind of uh, area here to fill before we could we could hit that area but uh, yeah this is going to be a, one of our targets maybe for next week um, but again don't get me wrong uh, we may see this one pushing a little bit further north and uh, yep uh, for now for now like I said one of the levels to keep an eye on will be the, the 0 0.9457 territory which is marked by the high of 8th of May so keep your eyes on this one um, because don't forget that we may see a drift higher here maybe a test of this area and uh, eventually we will get ourselves a bit of a correction here but as long as it probably uh, for now we'll keep an eye on this short-term upside support line but as long as it remains above the subside line yes we could could uh, still consider the upside. Um, US dollar against the Japanese yen. So this is what I talked about uh, yesterday. Basically, um, uh, basically the pair is is now pushing uh, pushing higher. Continues to push higher. Uh, but uh, yep, the main target for us is around the 109.38 zone, uh, which is marked by the high of six, uh, the highest point of April. So. Um, now then, again, for now, uh, like I said, we'll keep an eye on this one. That's going to be our main target, and uh, we'll see how uh, how this is going to play out. But uh, mm, but yeah, we're not going to drag this one too much to the upside. For now, we're just going to target that. And uh, uh, yep. Uh, for now, like I said, this is the main target for us, and uh, we are. Uh, we were expe I was expecting maybe a small correction here at some point, but uh, yeah, it didn't really uh, happen here. But uh, maybe it's just waiting to hit this level first and then retrace back down. So, uh, so yeah, keep your eyes on that one. Um, now then, the next potential tar uh, uh, next very interesting pair here to to discuss is the USDCHF. Also, something to keep in mind today, guys. Uh, keep an eye on it, and uh, let's see how this is going to play out. But the fact that yesterday the pair managed to finally overcome the uh, the lower side, one of the sides of the range here, and it managed to break the lower side of the range, which was roughly around the 0 0.9588, um, the pair now uh, kind of stayed it stayed below this closed the daily candle well below this that uh, that level so in a way for now we could maybe see something like this maybe small correction back up and then another round of selling but um, for those who are more on the cautious side you could uh, just wait for a drop below the yesterday's low which is roughly around the zero point um, 0 0.9544 uh, zone and then yep aim for, for further declines uh, the next potential area of support could be seen here somewhere near the 0 0.95 zone that's a very good target uh, marked near the lows of the uh, 30th of March here and uh, yep we'll keep an eye on down because that's like I said for now that's going to be our main target so if we have very disappointing number numbers from the US um, then uh, yep the, uh, the the pair could continue sliding
So now, yep, guys, for now, uh, be very careful here. Uh, be very cautious. If this gets back into the range, uh, this is where we'll probably... Uh, because, or should I say the bears should become a little bit more worried uh, because if the uh, the pair starts pushing higher and makes makes its uh, way above the high of this week near the 0.9648 zone then yes maybe we could consider a um, some larger extensions to the upside within this previous range and then yep we'll take it from there guys GBP CHF quick update here so the uh, the pair is um, the pair is kind of balancing above this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 13th of December um, and uh, yep for now the, the yesterday I talked about this one and what I was saying that if this candle stays um, if the candle stays above this downside line then uh, then yep uh, we could uh, we could see some more upside, especially if it climbs back above this uh, 1.2205 territory. That's the more uh, the, the kind of the safe uh, the safe game here, I would say. So, uh, yep, for now, guys, uh, be very careful. Uh, be very cautious. Um, we'll probably, like I said, we'll take a bit of a uh, conservative approach and wait for a push above the 1.2205 in order to get more comfortable with uh, higher levels. Um, in terms of the downside, we would need to see this one drifting back below this down, uh, downside line in order to aim for uh, for further declines. Now then, uh, jumping into Euro GBP very quickly here. So this one is showing positivity uh, and uh, the fact that it's currently balancing uh, slightly above the 0 0.8995 zone uh, is kind of uh, helping the bulls here a little bit so we'll keep on monitoring this but to be honest uh, as I mentioned before we need to see a nice good firm move above this and to be honest yesterday we had a nice daily close above this area so in a way this still increases the chances for this pair to drift higher uh, for now we will remain somewhat positive uh, of course carefully and uh, the next target for us will be somewhere around here near the 0 0.9150 so we'll keep an eye on that one in terms of the downside still the same game plan remains we need to see a drop uh, a drop below the uh, 0 0.8864 level right here in order to aim for uh, for uh, uh, for lower levels here because again until then we're not going to do anything um, now then, uh, jumping into uh, Euro JPY, this is this one is just even more on fire than uh, when I've showed you AG CAD, but this one is just exploding uh, to the upside. And uh, yep, uh, for now, I mean, it's just one-way traffic, and uh, we can see that the pair is um, at near the uh, it's over it's trading above the um, the January highs here near the 122.87 zone and uh, of course it continues to rise further so we'll see how this is going to play out for now um, we'll be very careful here and uh, yep for now we'll probably target something like 125.23 um, marked by the high of the 1st of May 2019 but again don't get me wrong given the uh, the strong move up move here there is a possibility to see a bit of a correction here first and uh, if it does correct lower then we will keep an eye on the on the highest point of January 2020 and we'll, we'll like I said we'll we'll keep this area in mind as a good possible uh, support zone so uh, so yep uh, for now uh, like I said, we'll keep an eye on that one. And uh, finally, finally, Euro USD. Uh, this one is continuing to, to to rally, and this is what I talked about yesterday. Yesterday, my, during my trader's tea time, uh, the pair was around here, still around the 1.1237 zone. And what I was saying that if we get a nice daily close above this, then yes, uh, higher levels could be met. And as you can see, we had a very strong uh, closure here ab above this uh, above this level. And and this way, in a way, kind of in, in increases the chances of a potential further move higher. Um, of course, for now, you can see that this is exactly what's happening right now.
now so the pair is drifting uh, further north the mm, the levels that we're going to be aiming for will be these right here the highest uh, near the highs of March of this year and uh, the first level to watch is around the 1.1458 zone um, which is marked by the high of the 10th of March slightly above that we do have the highest point of March near the 1.1496 zone and uh, basically these are the ones that we're going to be aiming for right now however don't get me wrong I mean we are quite overstretched here to the upside but this is what I've mentioned uh, yesterday as well because even if we see a further move above this 1.1237 then uh, then the uh, it could in a way rally like it did for example here in the end of February the beginning of March it could continue rallying like this and like I said it could hit this area here very easily uh, as, as you can see now as we speak it continues to push north so yep let's see if it, if we manage to reach today the 1.1458 zone uh, to be honest with this pace it's quite possible and the fact that we do have the NFPs uh, that's going to be very interesting to see if 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 the um, if the figures come out worse than expected then the dollar uh, weakens even more this pair could just continue flying high here and uh, maybe hitting like I said these levels like the 1.1458 or even the 1.1496 zone so keep your eyes on those guys for now that's the uh, that's the, mm, uh, the kind of the main target right now and uh, we're we need to see some sort of a confirmation uh, confirmation uh, a reverse uh, confirmation reversal basically uh, before we could consider some downside here but and, until that for now we're not seeing any con any reversal confirmation here so um, yep for now it's just one-way traffic and uh, we are we are aiming for these levels right right now so okay guys I hope you found it useful and thank you very much for watching and listening if you um, if you want to catch my video later on, my traders' uh, tea time is always uh, around 13:15 GMT time. We'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, of course, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. We'll see uh, how the market performed, and uh, hopefully, guys, you can uh, stay safe, guys, and stay safe in terms of uh, well, in, uh, stay safe health-wise and of course market-wise, and uh, be very careful with the market today because, like I said, we do have an eventful day. So have a wonderful trading day, guys, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.